Welcome back, everybody. This is episode four of my Clockwork Empires Alpha 44 playthrough. Um, looks like we have an event here, a spiritualist, a spiritual colonist bemoan lack of chapel. So this is one of the new events. And now that I've uh, been playing for a few days in game, uh, the colonists have noticed I have no chapel, so they want one. I can make them happy by promising them one. I can make them angry by refusing to build one. I mean, I, I don't have any reason not to build one, so I, I, I'll promise them a chapel. Now, if I don't build one in a timely fashion, uh, they might request again, and they might be angry that I didn't build it the first time. So I think I might have temporarily made them happy, and something's eating my crops. No, oh, okay. So I'll get around to building a chapel. I mean, I have other priorities right now. As those of you who watched the previous episode, episode three might recall, uh, there was a bit of a catastrophic cascade of events where I had a couple of fishmen raids and bandit raids, and then because of all the corpses both those raids produced, I got a swarm of beetles, which completely destroyed my chili crop here, my chili plant uh, plantation. So I'm just slowly building that up now. And in the meantime, we're surviving off of uh, things we foraged from the forest, so coconuts and fungus. Uh, there's a lot of human flesh lying around, but I don't want anyone eating that. I do have a bunch of raw beetle steak. Anyway, so all this stuff is getting cooked into food. Here is the body of our previous NCO, uh, Brad Pitt. And out here somewhere in the fog of war, Bessie Goldenburn. Let's see these pinkish steaks here. By default, long pork is... Oh, who... oh, okay. So I've got some dead bandit bodies around. I'm going to say... I don't want to just leave them lying around because that created the beetle problem we had earlier. So I am going to bury bandit corpses. In addition to cleanly disposing of bodies, burying bandit corpses also uh, improves your relations with the surrounding bandits. Uh, so one thing that might not be apparent with uh, bandit relations is that you can maintain reasonably good relations with them without officially declaring peace. So if you refuse bandits who want to desert their gangs to join your town, that will actually improve your relations with uh, the other bandit gangs. And if you have good relations with bandit gangs, they will occasionally drop by and give you tribute. So like uh, supplies, like ore and guns and things. Very rarely. If you... If you're hostile to them, obviously uh, you can you have the option of shooting them on sight, maintaining sort of a cold war where you just kind of agree not to shoot at each other, but you're not officially allied. Um, and actually, that that's the extent of peaceful relations with bandits. Uh, anyway, so here we are. Here's farmer Yaroslaw uh, Prychnikowski bearing a burying uh, one of the fallen bandits. Oh, a new bandit colony is set up somewhere. Our current policy is still to shoot at them on sight. Actually, let's, let's take a look at uh, Yaroslav's mental state here. So, he is angrier more than anything, although, uh, although he's also reasonably happy. His traits include scholarly, strange, and xenophobic. So xenophobic characters uh, they're strongly opposed to any sort of peace or relations with outside groups, be they foreign armies or fish people. And uh, if I say, say the fish people arrive, and I say I try to have peaceful relations with them, Yaroslav will raise an objection. And if I say, if I continue to have peaceful relations with them, that will actually make him sad and angry. I believe, actually, he might be happier now that we're, we have hostile relations with the fish people. Uh, so these are personality fa uh, aspects that uh, they vary from colonist to colonist, right? First of all, what is this? Oh, this is a crater. Uh, let's just get rid of... Clean up the edges of town here. Strange... Um, strange has a number of different effects on personality, and they're very subtle. So... They might make someone more susceptible to cultism and eating human flesh, although that might be the morbid trait. There are a whole bunch of traits, and they all affect many different things. Uh, scholarly scholarly colonists tend to be the ones who discover, say, discrepancies in your supplies, and they tend to make the best 
naturalists, like they like to study things. Um, however, so they like researching and experimenting, but they're less skilled at manual labor and huh, less happy about doing it. Maybe he would make a good uh, scientist if I ever get around to building a lab. So I, at that point, I'll I'll stop. Um, he'll stop being my farmer. Food made him happy. He had food recently. Hasn't slept recently. Uh, he slept on the floor. Um, he was comforted by the sight of soldiers. So these dimmer memories are... They're fading memories. They're not as strong. And those are the first ones to get replaced when he forms new memories. And all the, mem all the memories that appear in this feelings box are the ones that determine his mental state. Yaroslaw also wants to... He has desires, and fulfilling those desires will make him happy. Uh, he wants to kill a man, or kill a bandit. He wants to make a friend. And he wants a middle-class bed. So right now all I've got are lower-class cots. Um, that's because I don't have the resources to make beds right now. I mean, I'm growing flax, although, again, the flax plot got wiped out in the beetle crop of day... Day 6 or Day 7. Oh, suspicious goods. Sadie Brazenthomp. Black market goods. I am going to accept them without questions. What are they? One malachite and one hematite. Now, the notification here in the bottom right is I don't have enough weapons for all the soldiers I have, which is no surprise. Also, some crop spoilage. What's going on here? Oh, I lost a whole bunch of overseers. So I lost a whole bunch of work crews, and what happened here is that the work crew that was assigned to the flax plot uh, disbanded because the overseer died. I could assign a new overseer here, but I'm actually not going to. I'm going to stop farming this plot for now, mainly because I, I've only got a couple of spare work crews, and I really need them to uh, help get the colony back on its feet. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, Brad Pitt, we hardly knew ye. There's a chicken here. All right, jungle fowl. Uh, Zora Golden Crimble has a notice that we acknowledged that uh, we received black market goods. She wants to report it to the ministry. I'll... Fine, I'll allow the investigation. So if the invest... Now there's a chance the investigation won't discover anything amiss. Let's clean up the blood stains here. If they do find something amiss, I will lose a significant amount of prestige. So I might lose, I, I might actually go into negative prestige, which doesn't affect me directly. It just means it'll take me even longer to save up prestige to like buy stuff later on. So my choice of crop here, chilies, chilies, so they require a high amount of labor. Farmers who farm high labor crops will tend to be stuck there and not have the time to tend other plots. Uh, but the growth rate is high, which means that it will produce uh, edibles at regular intervals and very quickly. Uh, typically the next day, if not less. However, the crop yield is low. So relative to something like corn, uh, the overall production will be lower. So once I've got a buffer of food, I actually, I would like to switch over the plot to something more efficient, uh, like maize. How are we doing for food? So we've got some chilies and a little bit of stew. You know what? I think I can switch over to maize now. So that's why it's, uh, the best use of crops are situational, depending on the... Uh, depending on where you are in terms of labor and security and things like that. I really do think, um, I'd like the colony to be better defended. So remember when we uh, assigned a bunch of these guys to the new barracks? They all came in as militia and they all had brown coats. But now they've done a whole, if we take a look at Sadie Brazenthomp here, she's done a whole bunch of training in the meantime and in addition to making her numb and emotionless through exhaustion, um, enough memories of 
soldierly training will turn them into soldiers with red coats. Whoops. And that means they're better fighters. They tend to have better morale. They reload faster. They're just better soldiers overall. Of course, the problem here is I've only got one gun and two pistols for the entire colony. So we'll just let the auto save go on here. So I think the colony is back on its feet. Uh, another thing I could do to secure the colony is maybe to fill in some of these gaps between buildings with gabions. There we go. And what that means is uh, beetles are very dumb and they will just make a, a bee line straight to your crops. So if no direct path exists, they'll either just uh, get up in a big log jam at the edge of the wall, or they'll take a longer time to walk around the edge to get in at your crops, which gives your colonists more time to kill them before they start eating your chilies. Uh, and uh, now fishmen can use doors. So if doors are open, they will walk in, but otherwise they, they also cannot walk through walls. It turns your colony, it turns the buildings of your colonies into functional walls. Bandits, on the other hand, and foreign uh, soldiers, they know how to use doors. So they can they can get into your colony without too much trouble. Although even, even then, with the addition of walls, it takes them longer to get around, which gives your soldiers more time to shoot them before they get into the center of town. Okay, I've got two workers incoming. I will gladly accept those. Now, I've only got three prestige. Uh, I don't need any more surveying done. Can I... No, I think I'm going to skip calling in a favor and bank it for later. All right, and now we can consider the next building to build. Oh, I am short of... I'm completely out of stone. The problem we recognized right at the beginning... Ah, that's why I was clearing out this area. I was going to... because this... I had this area surveyed earlier with a uh, naturalist and his mineralo mineralogy report uh, discovered that a mine here will produce stone. And it's, I think, the only source of stone anywhere nearby. So I'd like to build a mine here. Now I hope a constructing mine doesn't require stone because otherwise I'm kind of screwed. Mine, you need one unit of stone. Oh, go oh good. All right, can't build a mine to quarry up rock until I oh, until I discover more stone. This is stone. It's a long freaking way from the colony, but I think it's the only source of stone. Uh, the problem here, of course, is that it's next to these mysterious black rocks. And if you may recall from, I believe, episode two, uh, we actually awakened an obelisken in this area. So what I'm going to say is very gingerly only mine this one rock I'm gonna mine here as little as possible I'm gonna get the minimum amount of stone necessary to build a mine here where I can more safe uh, I can safely acquire rhyolite boulders so although I've switched over this plot to maize plants that are uh, already planted they will be tended to the extent of their life cycle so chili plants that are in the process of growing, they will still be tended until they grow up and they get harvested and uh, then they turn into food. But any new plantings, like this one, uh, will be planted as the new crop. And what's this notification here? Ah, oh, yes, they're still bemoaning the lack of chapel. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna, ref I don't really wanna refuse building a chapel. But yeah, I, I, I got delayed. I'm gonna build another chapel. I'm a little reluctant to actually build a chapel because I'm very short of stone. In fact, I don't have the resources to build it. I, I need two stone minimum to build a chapel. So um, our supply chain is at a bit of a standstill here. We desperately need stone. Otherwise, we can concentrate on food production. One thing I can show you here, uh, so these steaks, these long pork steaks, they're the result of um, their human flesh. And they, they're they generated on the map when something uh, butchers a human corpse. So you've got a dead human somewhere, 
and then like a fox comes and eats it, it will turn into long pork. Or a, f a fishman will also butcher humans into flesh and eat it. Oh, a bandit has, uh, he wishes to defect to our colony. I'm actually going to accept this bandit. Lucretia Robber has left the Robber Gang. And with it, she brings valuable knowledge. So this is where the Robber Gang is, and uh, presumably she's running toward my settlement. There we go. Now, back to this topic of long pork. Eating it will actively drive your colonists insane, and I kind of don't want that. I mean, all sorts of fun things happen when your colonists go insane and form cults and things, so that's something you might want. Uh, for this particular game, the colony is struggling enough. Where did I get so many soldiers? Do I have two squads? Anyway, uh, so by default, long pork is prohibited. You can prohibit or permit any uh, stockpile good by highlighting it, and then you can claim it so that your cons will pick it up and deliver it to your stockpiles and use it in recipes. Or you can forbid them. You, there we go, which highlights them in red and disqualifies them from retrieval and consumption. I'm a little confused as to why I have so many soldiers, given that I have only one barracks. Oh, because I filled up that barracks with soldiers. Huh. Oh, come on. Okay, Iman Steelsmith has actually picked up the prohibited long pork because in that brief window, <laughs> I was demonstrating the for forbid item system. Um, he must have picked it up as a job. Well, there's a hunk of human flesh sitting in the stockpile. So Zora Golden Crimble has harvested a little bit of rock. So I've got some stone here in the stockpile. And now I'm going to build a, uh, a stone mine. So as long as I build a building and then a mine shaft, within, I would say, maybe five squares of this carrot, it will always produce what the report, whoops. It will always produce what the report says it will produce. All right, so here's the mine building. Uh, do I have the, the actual mineshaft module requires one iron ingot and three planks, both of which I have. There we go. And a door so someone can get in. So um, all the chili plants have been harvested and all the new planting is corn. Now corn grows more slowly than chili but is more efficient in the long run. Yeah, um, however, that means we're actually gonna have a bit of a food shortage. I mean, I've got raw, got raw, the raw ingredients of food. So hopefully we can survive off that. In the meantime, I should probably ramp up my foraging efforts. There's a fair amount of coconuts out by the graveyard. Oh, and there's a ton of fungus out here, but it is right next to the bandit camp. I don't really want to grab it from there. There we go. So um, what's really bottlenecking me now is lack of work crews, so I could really, really use more overseers. I lost, I don't know, a third to a half of my overseers in the massacre last episode, which means if I've got some overseers uh, attached to workshops here, I don't have, I don't really have sufficient overseers to man more workshops, and um, my ability to process tasks in parallel is a bit limited. Uh, now, new overseers will arrive automatically, that is without my input, based on the production um, of your colony. So when you produce stuff, when you farm stuff, when you make planks, when you uh, harvest stone and stuff, that all goes into an internal counter. 
and at regular intervals when that counter ticks over you'll get a new overseer based on your based on your production so the faster and the more you can produce the more you will, more overseers you'll get um so i'll wait for the next couple of overseers at least and I, I assume the same system applies to how often you get immigrants uh the lower class workers and actually i could use some of them as well anyway so the mine is under construction i think things are okay but i'm a little concerned we, we, are, we will experience a bit of a food shortage Hopefully no one will die. So, uh, things have stabilized again. We're still at 18 colonists. Uh, we're now at day 10. Uh, I think I'm going to cut this one off here in the interest of brevity. The colony is coming along nicely after a bit of a shaky start. Let's just have just a nice, calm couple of days after after all the panic. Hopefully the corn will come in soon. Uh, Yaroslaw Prochenkowski is busy planting corn. Uh, right, so my name is Alfred. The game is Clockwork Empires. It's an early access being developed by Gaslamp Games. Uh, it's available on Steam and through the Humble Store, and I believe through Gaslamp Games' own site. Uh, it's in progress, so not everything's in here, and stuff is buggy and broken. I mean, I th most of the major systems are shaping up. So there's a whole bunch of like biomes and creatures and additional systems. You know, everything is it's all being worked on. Uh, so I hope this has been a an interesting look at the game for folks i'll probably continue this particular series for at least a couple more episodes i mean i haven't really <laughs> i haven't got the colony quite as far along as i'd like uh but otherwise uh thanks for tuning in and have a good one